Hi kindergartners, it's Miss Want. I'm here to do the read aloud with you today. Today we're going to read one of my favorite books called What Do You Do With an Idea by Kobe Yamada and illustrated by Mae Besom. At the end of this book we're going to talk about the author's purpose, why the author wrote this book. We know it must have been important for the author for people to hear this story because they put lots of effort into writing this specific book. One of the ways to think about author's purpose is what the author wanted readers to hear and how the author wanted the reader to feel. One way to figure out the author's purpose is to check in on our own hearts and think about how we're feeling as we read this book, especially at the end of the book. That might give us a clue as to why the author wrote this story, why the author wrote this specific book. Before we get started, we're going to talk about two words two feeling words. One is frustrated. We might be familiar with the word frustrated. I feel frustrated when I really want something and I don't get what I want. I feel frustrated. The other feeling word we're going to talk about is inspired. Inspired is a yellow word. It means that someone else's idea or something someone else does gives me energy to go do something that I want to do. I feel inspired when someone does something that makes me want to go do something similar. Those words will be important when we talk about how the author made us feel, how this book made us feel at the end. What do you do with an idea? One day, I had an idea. Where did it come from? Why is it here? I wondered. What do you do with an idea? I'm noticing the illustrator is doing something interesting. The illustrator has drawn this little egg with legs and a crown, and I think that's the idea. And at first I was a little confused because I know that an idea is something inside my brain. It's not something I could hold or I could see. But I think in this book, the illustrator is going to show the idea with this little creature. At first, I didn't think much of it. It seemed kind of strange and fragile. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just walked away from it. I acted like it didn't belong to me, but it followed me. Again, we know that an idea isn't something walking behind us, it's something in our brains, but it makes me think that the author is saying that the idea keeps coming up in this character's brain. The, the character can't stop thinking about this idea. The idea is following them. I worried what others would think. What would people say about my idea? I kept it to myself. I hid it away and didn't talk about it. I tried to act like everything was the same as it was before my idea showed up. there was something magical about my idea. I had to admit it. I felt better and happier when it was around. It wanted food. It wanted to play. Actually, it wanted a lot of attention. I'm trying to remember again. Do ideas actually eat food? No, they don't actually eat food. It makes me think that when the author says, actually, it wanted a lot of attention, it makes me think that this character is really thinking about this idea and giving this idea a lot of attention. It grew bigger and we became friends. I showed it to other people, even though I was afraid of what they would say. I was afraid that if people saw it, they would laugh at it. I was afraid they would think it was silly. And many of them did. They said it was no good. They said it was too weird. They said it was a waste of time and that it would never become anything. And at first, I believed them. I actually thought about giving up on my idea. I almost listened to them. Then I realized, what do they really know? This is my idea, I thought. No one knows it like I do. And it's okay if it's different and weird. I decided to protect it, to care for it. 
I fed it good food. I worked with it. I played with it. But most of all, I gave it my attention. My idea grew and grew. And so did my love for it. I built a new house, one with an open roof, where it could look up at the stars, a place where it could be safe to dream. I liked being with my idea. It made me feel more alive, like I could do anything. It encouraged me to think big and then to think bigger. It shared its secrets with me. It showed me how to walk on my hands because it said, it is good to have the ability to see things differently. I couldn't imagine my life without it. Then one day something amazing happened. My idea changed right before my very eyes. It spread its wings, took flight, and burst into the sky. I notice on this page that there is so much color. I don't know how to describe it, but it went from being here to being everywhere. It wasn't just a part of me anymore. Now it was a part of everything. And then I realized what you do with an idea. You change the world. I'm having a text to self connection on this page, something that happened in the book that's similar to something that I've experienced this year in kindergarten. The author said, you change the world. And that reminds me of our freedoms unit, because we know that freedoms are when everyone has what they need in order to change the world in the way that's right for them. Our good reader question for today is an inference question, which means that you're gonna make a guess based on what the illustrator showed you or the author told you. Our good reader question today is, how do you think the character's feeling on this page? Remember, a good answer might sound like, I think the character's feeling because the illustrator showed me, or I think the character's feeling because the author told me. Go ahead and take a second. How do you think the character's feeling? answer is that I think the character is feeling energized. I think the character has lots of energy. And I think that because the illustrator has showed me the character almost floating in the sky. And that makes me think that the character has feels like they have lots of energy. As usual, we're going to leave you a menu, two things that you could do with this book. Again, you might choose to do one of them today and one of them tomorrow, both of them today, both of them tomorrow, whatever works for you. Here are two good reader options. The first is a text to self connection. A text to self connection is making a connection between this book and my life. Something that's the same, maybe between the character or the setting or the problem or the solution, and something that's the same in my life. The other option is to talk about the author's purpose. We talked about that at the beginning of this book, so I'll show you what that means. Again, the author's purpose is why the author wrote this book, and one of the ways we know why the author wrote this book is to check in about how we felt when we read the book. That might tell us what the author hoped that readers would feel and why they wrote the book. A good answer to the author's purpose question might sound like, the author wanted me to feel because, and why you think that. Today, the question is, do you think that the author wanted you to feel frustrated? Or do you think that the author wanted you to feel inspired? You, again, might use evidence from the illustrations or from the author's words, from the words in the book to help you figure out how you think the author wanted you to feel. This could be verbal, this could be out loud to someone else, it could be something in your brain, or this could be something that you write down, your answer to this good reader question. How do you think the author wanted you to feel? Frustrated or inspired? Those are your two options. 
I'll leave them right here. Thank you for reading with me today. Good luck, readers.